Hey girl, hey, welcome to my channel. Thank you for clicking on today's video. If it's your first time here, I'm your girl, Serena Elizabeth. And on this channel, we talk about self-help, we talk about business, and we do vlogs. So if this is your type of channel, make sure you subscribe before you go. And for all of my girl tribe and all the others who have joined this journey, thank you so much for joining us today. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment in the box below, let me know how you're feeling this conversation share this with other people that you think would enjoy this video as well and if you haven't already subscribed please go ahead and do so all of these are free ways to help support my channel and your girl is on the road to 1k so thank you so much and i greatly appreciate all the ways that you'd support me and let's go ahead and get into the video so as you can tell from the topic we are talking about getting out of our own way and releasing energy and things that no longer serve us so that we can move forward to the next step in life, right? So everything is energy, right? And if that is true, then we need to start looking at things on an energetic level as well. So it's not just physically letting things go um, or people go, it's also energetically purging things in order to make way for what is in store for you, right? Let's just think about it as it pertains to money. Money is a physical thing, it's currency, but it also is energy. If you go to buy something, you are going to have a literal exchange of energy, value, and currency, right? You go to the store, something is $20, you have to agree with that, right? Because if you don't think it's worth that, you're not gonna pay for it. But you've agreed that that's how much it's worth. And so then you exchange currency, which is also energy, and then you receive what you think is your worth what you paid for. Or if you lucked up, you've gotten something that you think was well worth like even more so than what you pay for it. Maybe you caught it on sale or something like that and you're like, man, this was only $20, what? Knowing you would have paid so much more for it because you've deemed it that much more valuable, right? So think about this also in a supernatural level as well, right? So in Christianity, we tithe and we don't tithe because God needs our money to do anything. We tithe because there is an energetic and a supernatural exchange that happens when we do something in the natural, God is going to superimpose his super on that natural act and give us so much more, right? And the Bible says, if we tithe 10%, then it will come back to us a hundredfold. So we are going to get so much more value than what we actually gave. And that is the reason why we tithe our money. That is the reason why we tithe our time. That is the reason why we tithe whatever it is that we have to give, because we are gonna get so much more in return for that, right? And that's the way God set it up to be. So we need to apply that way of thinking in our lives. So let's think about this, like, you know, just to make sure that you're actually picking up what I'm putting down, okay? You had a cup of water but I had a cup of water that was like super hydrating. It had electrolytes in it. It was flavored. It was, you know, chock full of everything that you needed to make it that much more beneficial to you. But you just had a plain old cup of water and that cup of water is good. It does what it's supposed to do. It's hydrating, it's good for you, but this water, was better, right? But you were told, well, you gotta give me this in order for me to give you that. Like you, you, you're, you can't have both. So what are you gonna do? Are you just gonna hold on to that water? Cause you're like, well, it gets the job done. Or are you going to be willing to let go of that water in order to get that new super hydrating, electrolyte filled, sparkling, flavorful, hydrating water what are you gonna do and that's 
kind of where we get stumped, right? So we, we want to keep what we have because we're just comfortable with this, flaws and all. Even though it, it was tap water, even though you know it wasn't the best tasting water, even because you know it didn't supply all the other stuff, it didn't give you the electrolytes, it didn't give you the added vitamins and benefits as this other water. We were like, but yeah, but this is this is my water. This is my water, right? So we're skeptical of the new thing because we're like, well. Maybe like what what if what if it's not really all that they say it's going to be? What if it doesn't taste, you know, like they say it's going to taste like we're just super skeptical of the new thing, but we're totally forgiving of the thing that we already have because we're comfortable with it. So what does that come from? That comes from the fear of the unknown, perhaps the lack of faith right? So what you're really doing is stopping traffic. You're stopping the flow of events because you're so stuck on this. You're not able to get to the des your destination because everything is bottlenecked right here. You're stopped, right? You can't go any further because you're not willing to let that go. So what it boils down to is this, right? What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again, hoping for a different result. So we already know that if we continue to do the same thing, if we hold on to the same thing, we hold on to the same people, we continue to pour energy into the same things, there's not going to be any change. We're not going to get a different result because it's impossible. So we have to, change the mindset. We have to let go of the thing that we like. We have to change the habits and the actions in order to receive those different results. So personally for me, I've been saying that I don't wanna be in another relationship, right? And so anybody who knows me knows that I don't wanna be in another relationship. Even if you follow me and watch my videos, you can tell I don't wanna be in another relationship because I lead with the fact that I am a widow, right? And, you know, I had said that I don't want to do that anymore because yes, it happened to me. Yes, that's a part of my story, but is that really who I am? When I went looking in the Bible yesterday for a story about a widow, it really wasn't anything that I could relate to because that is just a label, right? That's a label that society puts on you, that you're this widow. Society will put on you that you're a single mom. Society will put on you that you didn't go to college or whatever it is that is your thing, right? Society will put that on you. But is that your true identity? No, your identity is who you are. And my identity in Christ is that I am a child of God and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So overall, regardless of what society says about me, what does God say about me? What does God say that I can have? What does God say that I can do? What is his purpose for my life? In order for me to receive the full blessing of what God has in store for me, I need to stop aligning to what society says. I need to stop aligning to what I think my identity is and align to what I know my identity is in Christ. What that means is for me is releasing that energy that is associated with being a widow, right? Releasing that and so that I can receive what he has for me, which we already know is going to be exceedingly abundantly above anything that I could think, ask, or imagine. So it's the same for you. Whatever your thing is, whether it's you're a single mom, whether it's you haven't graduated high school or haven't graduated college, um, whether it's you're a dropout, whether it's you're a widow, whatever it is that is your thing, you have to let go of that so that you can receive what it is that you're supposed to receive. You have to get do away with the old and make room for the new. What do we do before the holidays? Like if you're a mom, you're getting rid of some of those toys, you're getting rid of some of those clothes because you know that your kid is about to get a bunch of clothes and about a bunch of toys and you need to make way for that new stuff. So we need to be doing the same thing in our lives, in our head, in our hearts. Get 
rid of all of the things that no longer serve us and make room for the things that do serve us, that will align to our purpose, that will give us the things that we are looking for. So change is going to be uncomfortable, that's inevitable, but it's only for a period of time. It's only for a short period of time. Our brains are literally wired to love habits and routines right if we continue to show up for ourselves even in the discomfort then it will get easier and easier each and every time that we do it so even though it's uncomfortable know that it is only for a short period of time and as long as you continue to show up for yourself you're going to see a difference it's going to work out so back to my example the less i started to identify with being a widow and the more i started to identify with who I am, Zarina Elizabeth, and who God says I am, that's when doors opened up. That's when opportunities came. That's when things started to shift in my life. I don't know exactly what was that one thing, but it was really the mindset shift. It was the identity crisis that I had. We are afraid to let go of the things that we have, mostly because we have a lack mindset. We don't think we're gonna get it again. We don't think we're gonna get better, right? These are all operating under a, a lack mindset. If we had an abundance mindset, we know that it's coming again. We know that we're gonna get more. We know that we're going to get better. And we can definitely you know, talk about that in another video, but we really need to have a mind shift change about aligning ourselves with what we want better yet what God wants for us. I personally have grown and have accomplished things that I've wanted to accomplish in life, but I'm not where I wanna be, nowhere near where I wanna be. I have people who are doing the same things that I'm doing, but maybe have flourished more. And it's like, why? I have had situations where I've taken exact steps as someone else, but they've popped and gotten a lot further than me. Why? Is it for fear of the unknown? Is it imposter syndrome? Um, what if I fail, right? But what if I succeed? And then what if I have to keep exceeding, right? So it's th that expectation now is on me. You've done it, now you gotta keep doing it. All of that is operating from scarcity mindset, a lack mindset. You have to get out of that. In this moment, I am working on shifting my mindset, letting go of what I am just simply comfortable with about myself, my widowhood, whatever it is, these things that I have grown accustomed to that I've accepted and allowed for in my life. And I am letting those things go so that God can deal with me how he needs to deal with me to align me for what he has in store for me, which we already know is greater than what I could ever think or ask for. Here's to creating space for myself and how you need to create space for yourself. So what we should do is when we are expecting change, when we want change, what we really need to do is take a step back and think, am I prepared for it if it happens today? You content creators, you entrepreneurs, people who are single that are looking for a relationship, looking for this business to blow, looking for your content to be seen. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you ready for it now? Are you ready to like, is your content ready for that? Is your business structure ready for that? right? Is your production ready for that? You single person who say you're ready for a relationship, have you healed? Have you done the work on yourself so that you are prepared for that person to come into your life so that you're not putting your stuff on them? Are you fully whole in who you are right now, right? You entrepreneur, is your business set up to take this flood of customers right now? If I said, here's a million customers that's going to buy you out are you able to replenish your supply are you in position to be set up if that were to happen now if not this is what you need to do you need to be working on that because what you're going to have to do is act as if you already have it right that's faith 
right? The belief of something that is unseen. It's, it's the knowing and the experience expecting of something that you don't see. That's also what people call the law of manifestation. You have to get out of your way. You have to let go. You have to create space to be able to take on. You have to have the capacity for the blessings that you're asking to receive. So I hope this video helped you. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment in the box below. Let me know your thoughts. Share, share, share this with other people that you think would enjoy this video also. And subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.